Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Uh, we're going to go through some basics with installation and licensing, but the core point of this webinar is to give you guidance on where you can get help learning these tools and getting started with these tools. Where can you start on your own? Where to go? So let's let's kind of start with installation and licensing. Um, this is going to be one of our Go Engineer blogs, the ultimate guide to SOLIDWORKS licensing types, activation, and borrowing. You can Google this online. Um, this is going to point out that there is essentially two styles of licensing. There is standalone licensing and network licensing. So depending on what type you have purchased, installation from there um, is pretty straightforward. If you don't know which one you have, Take a look at your serial number. Uh, typically, if it starts with the with a 9000, that's a standalone license. If it's something like 9010, that's typically a network license. Uh, starting with SOLIDWORKS standalone serial numbers. Uh, this is again another blog I'm referencing. You can see the titles on the screen and search these on Google. Uh, so the standalone network license. You can essentially deal with these through activation and deactivation. That's how you might share them between different computers. Uh, a very quick idea of how to handle this, you go to the help inside the top right of SOLIDWORKS, you go to licenses, and then you can activate and deactivate these simulation licenses, for example. But how would you at first install them? Again, another blog I'm referencing called How to Install SOLIDWORKS Add-in Licenses. Uh, you would go to your Programmed and Features, search whatever that is in your whatever Windows version, uh, search up SOLIDWORKS, and then select Modify SOLIDWORKS. In this, an installation manager that pops up, you will want to modify your installation. And then hit the checkbox next to SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation and copy and paste your serial number into uh, this open area. From there, you hit next a few times and you're able to install your software. Fairly straightforward. However, if you are not able to modify your SOLIDWORKS installation, if it only gives you the option to uninstall it, that means you have an administrative image on your computer. Somebody else at your company is managing that administrative image, and they need to go through and add the SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation license, and then allow your computer to be able to install that, push that uh, installation to your computer. If this is your situation, reach out to your IT department. They can always reach out to their VAR for help. All right. Alternatively, there is a solid network license manager. This is when you have the network license. Where this is installed would be on the server computer that is hosting the license. And then other computers are checking out that license from that server. So on that server computer, you edit the solid network license manager server application, select stop, to pull back all the licenses from the various computers to that server, select Modify, Activate and Reactivate, and then finish this wizard up. Uh, this will allow you to add a new license and then activate it. That's enough at that point. Restart the Solid Network License Manager server, and other computers will be able to use those licenses. Next, let's get into the technical guide, tutorials, and help files that SOLIDWORKS provides. Easily accessible, this is typically in the top right-hand corner of SOLIDWORKS. We've got the help, we'll go to SOLIDWORKS simulation, and you'll have four separate guides and tutorials to go through. Let's start with the user guide. Selecting the user guide will take you to uh, an online URL these days. So this is, of course, searchable. You see the search tab in the top left. There's also a bunch of articles you can manually navigate through as well. All of these are, again, the key text is searchable, but there's pictures included. There's links to other articles within the same help file. This is a great way to get started with the software. 
That's the help. In the same area, you can also access the tutorials. It's going to do the same thing, pop up something in the browser. Uh, but these are going to reference a bunch of individual tutorial files with steps involved on how to set them up. Um, you can see here, this is like the first page of these tutorials and all the steps are you know, underneath them as categories. Now, where are these files? Uh, they come with the installation of your software. So navigate through this file path. C drive, program files, SOLIDWORKS Corp. I have written 2024 after that because I have multiple versions installed on my computer. Yours may just be called SOLIDWORKS Corp. I should say core. And then SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation. So navigate there. Within that folder, you will see a bunch of other folders. Look for these types. You'll see examples and validation examples. Those two folders hold the flow simulation uh, file sets for these examples. I recommend you copy these files to a local drive like your desktop. That way you can actually save changes that you make as you go through these tutorial sets. Now, I've referenced the tutorial files and the validation examples. You kind of saw where that folder was, but where are these guides not in URL form? Uh, you can also access these through your installation drive. You would dig in a little deeper. Um, you'd go to Lang, English, and then Docs. Uh, English, of course, if you speak English, uh, Docs, and then you're going to um, see a various PDFs in there. So the validations PDF, tutorials PDF, searchable, again, goes to the same information you're seeing here online. Finally, a technical reference. We saw the PDF just there in that screenshot, but also accessible online. Uh, this is going to go through the background math of flow simulation. For example, we use the Navier-Stokes equations, the K-Epsilon turbulence model, um, mass conservation, and various other uh, physics that you can read into here. All right, that's accessible to the top right-hand corner of SOLIDWORKS. Next, hey, I would like a crash course on flow simulation. Yes, of course, there's plenty of blogs and YouTube videos out there, but let me guide you towards your recommended trainings that kind of take you beginning to um, this is the one that SOLIDWORKS creates, and it's accessible. It's free for SOLIDWORKS users. You're going to go to my.solidworks.com. Okay, that's the URL you want to start with. From there, you're going to go to the Training tab, and then search Flow Simulation in the top right-hand corner. A lot of various videos are available. I'm going to filter by learning paths and dig into the flow simulation course. I see a series of videos here. I can only watch them if I create a login. This is just going to be a login with your email address for your company, likely the one attached to whatever SOLIDWORKS serial number you're using. So go ahead and make a SOLIDWORKS login. That's all you need. And then you'll be able to watch these videos. Altogether, it's likely about an hour to hour and a half at the whole course. All right, that's your free training kind of available, a nice little set of that. Getting started best practices for um, uh, kind of your first time accessing the software. So I really actually want to start with how should you be managing your CAD files? Uh, when you work with uh, SOLIDWORKS Flow, you are often going to have uh, simplified geometry or lids to close off openings, uh, depending on what kind of analyses you're running. In this case, I've got inlet, outlet, and hole lids for areas of the model. Um, knowing that you're going to be making CAD changes and you don't want to affect your drawings, it can be a good idea to do a file pack and go, create a copy of all the files you're working with so you can hack them up however you want. However, also, we have people who work with SOLIDWORKS PDM, the data management tool, which doesn't always allow duplicate SOLIDWORKS file names. In that case, make your flow simulation lids virtual. You can see the square brackets around these lids now. 
These only exist within the assembly. They are not physical files that will need to get checked in. So your data management vault will not throw warnings for a bunch of duplicate file names for various lids you might create in different flow simulation projects. The engineering database and a few rebuild settings best practices. The engineering database is a storage for all the various uh, inputs to the software, as well as any customizations I might have made. For example, uh, these predefined gases come with the software, but I could always make my own and these are defined. When you make your own, you're going to want to be able to access those for years to come. So go to Tools, Flow Simulation, Tools, and then Options. Navigate into General Options. And look at this top area here, user defined database location. I'm referencing a chembase user2.xml. This is your engineering database. Move that into a network drive, something that's not tied to your installation set. Next, uh, reset mesh settings. Oh, ask always and never. Ask is the default. I find ask kind of annoying, to be honest. I like to switch this over to never. Uh, this comes into play when you make CAD changes to your SOLIDWORKS files and then want it to rebuild uh, within your flow simulation project, rebuilding the mesh, rebuilding the computational domain. Personally, I like to pick never, and then I come here and I choose rebuild to bring in all my SOLIDWORKS CAD changes when I'm ready to go. Uh, this prevents a lot of pop-ups as you're working with the tool. When you run simulations, you are going to have these project files automatically created within the same folder as wherever your assembly or part file was. So you can see I've run three projects here, and I've got three folders. Within those folders, you'll have a bunch of different simulation result outputs. The one to pay attention to is the .fld file. Uh, this file um, is always going to have uh, the same numbers as the project folders on them. Uh, so you can have duplicate file names there, so be careful of that. Again, in case you're implementing your own SOLIDWORKS PDM system um, and you're not allowing duplicate file names, make sure FLD files are an exception because these are always going to be named very similarly as you run various projects. Again, these FLD files are where all your results are stored. The rest is extra. You don't actually have to uh, manage those other result files. As you work in SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation, uh, whenever you close and reopen assemblies, for example, your results are not going to automatically load. So you're going to right-click on that results folder and select load. That's going to pull in that one.fld file. You can also load from file. It's going to allow you to navigate through Windows Explorer and select an FLD file. In case you move them around and Flow Simulation loses the connection, again, you're manually attaching to it this way. Uh, let's get through a few quick tips with the interface. Uh, these are going to be just a few mouse tricks, a few uh, screen checkboxes that I think come in handy. Uh, the first one is going to be about quick selections. When you spend the time to set up something like a fan, in this case, that I have two faces selected, if you pre-select it and then choose something else, the faces will automatically fill in your selection boxes. So just a little bit of a quick selection trick there. Uh, you can also do this after the fact, clicking into your flow management tree and clicking various things in the tree will pre-select those things. The other things I wanted to show are kind of in the results area. Um, a common thing people ask for is velocity near a surface so they can see what those flow paths kind of feel like. So I'm going to plot velocity on all the surfaces, and I'm going to hit OK. And I'm not going to be able to see into the model. Another issue that comes up when you're doing internal flows. Uh, crop region is possible in many of the different result plots and flow. So I'll go and crop, take a look inside. Everything still looks totally black. That means zero velocity, which is the correct physics. Velocity is zero on an unmoving wall. 
However, we can offset outside of the boundary layer and get a feel for velocity near the wall. That way we can start making, you know, just some design decisions. So offset, crop region, great ways to interrogate the model that are not immediately obvious. I want to show you a little bit more with viewing results, um, but yeah, it's going to be here in this display drop down. As I click lighting, watch the shadows, you'll see them flicker off. It's a little bit hard to see in this kind of color, so I'll show you how I change the colors here. You double click the legend, flip back to one of the defaults, I hit OK. Now again, watch the shadows, I'll do this a few times. That's the lighting on with the shadows, it's the lighting off without them. Without them, it's true color, it's the exact same colors as the legend. It makes it easier to parse your results. I'll go ahead and hide these and look at transparency. This is the last little trick for looking inside the model. Transparency can globally make everything transparent, can globally turn off transparency. So that's a nice trick for large assemblies. We just want to see inside them very easily. Uh, in this case, I'll do it a little manually. So those are just a few little graphical tricks for viewing your results, uh, quick selecting a few things. There's plenty of other ways to do it, but I like those few tips and tricks. All right, let's get into a little bit more the forums uh, and then kind of close this off. So SolidWorks forums. Uh, you're going to start with forum.solidworks.com or just Google SolidWorks forums. You'll come up on this web page. From there, you're going to select login. Again, you're going to use your SolidWorks login for these things. It will take you to the 3D Experience platform and the SolidWorks user forum community. Don't search up here in the top. I actually recommend you search on the right hand side here. For whatever topic you're interested in or whatever question you have, you'll be able to see uh, previously made posts, comments, and potential answers. Uh, if you're just getting started with the user forum, check out the wiki. Uh, these are going to be uh, pinned posts like solid practice documents, which are uh, kind of long blog articles, essentially, or other posts or frequently asked questions that others in the community have tagged. So a great place to get started as you're getting used to the SOLIDWORKS user forum. GoEngineer also has its own user forum, and you will access it through the GoEngineer website. Uh, you want to click in the top right-hand corner and select Community. Use a GoEngineer login. You can create one real quick um, using your company email address. And then from there, click into whatever category most interests you and post your questions. Uh, GoEngineer support staff and engineers monitor these forums. So we try to answer majority of the questions that come through here uh, so that everybody gets an answer. But of course, other users around the, the GoEngineer customer base are logging in and answering questions as well. That's forums, another great place to get your questions answered. Uh, knowledge base is another self-serve option. Uh, SOLIDWORKS does have an available knowledge base for its SOLIDWORKS customers. Uh, you're going to want to start from SOLIDWORKS.com slash support slash home. Uh, this is going to provide a lot of quick links to various areas of the SOLIDWORKS website. But for specifically the knowledge base, I'll click 3DS knowledge base here. This is going to search all the potential brands that the parent company Dassault Systems owns. So this is more than just SOLIDWORKS. It's this factory flow simulation. It's a 3D via. It's various brands. So I recommend you search by the SOLIDWORKS brand, filter your results by that brand, so you can start digging into what you're asking for. So I've got a lot of different flow simulation results here and a lot of different ways to filter. My uh, tip, my favorite way to filter after this is through the knowledge type. I like question and answer and things like bug reports or SPR. Guide for users is just a SOLIDWORKS help. So I've usually searched the SOLIDWORKS help on my own and don't want to filter by that. So that's a great way to get a feel for what other knowledge is out there um, that SOLIDWORKS support staff have created. 
So that is the SOLIDWORKS knowledge base. Uh, Go Engineer knowledge base is most easily accessed through Google, honestly. Google various blogs or videos. But if you want to navigate a little more manually, you can go to our support dropdown, blog, and then filter by categories, like SOLIDWORKS simulation would get you access to all of our simulation blogs. Since we're talking about flow simulation, a very recent popular blog is based on what sort of hardware uh, someone might want for something like SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. So you can take a look at this uh, CPU cores blog. It comes in handy for just getting a feel for how to improve solve times and how your hardware affects those solve times. Last few minutes, we'll finish this off with I've exhausted all these self-paced options. I want to know how I can talk to a person and have my questions answered. This is going to most typically uh, make sense for someone who's a Go Engineer customer. But if you're not a Go Engineer customer, find your local VAR. You can do that through um, online searching. Who's my local VAR? Um, VAR is value added reseller. Find whoever that is. You'll be able to find a phone number for them and give them a call. But if you're going to your customer, this is how you can talk to someone. Uh, start with the Go Engineer website, goengineer.com. Uh, go to the support drop down, technical support, software support, and call us within uh, 12 hour days. That's our phone number. Send us an email or schedule a session with our support team. If you're not a customer of ours, you can. Uh, schedule an application mentoring session through there. It does cost money. But if you are a customer, I recommend you go to this customer portal. Watch this video to get a feel for what it is, and then go create a login using the email address, your company email address. I'm using a fake account here. This is a Go Engineer account. But through your login, you would schedule a application engineering session. It's going to be free. You would select the topic you're most interested in and the day and time that most works for you. This will automatically schedule a Zoom session on your calendar and one of our engineering calendars. You can also access your old tech support cases or self-paced training courses um, and other things. If you want more walkthroughs of the customer portal, you can also schedule time with your success manager. They can go through all the various options of your customer. Um, so again, the customer portal itself is for Go Engineer customers, but if you want our help, just go to the goengineer.com and support drop down. You can access us that way as well. So guys, that's um, the quick crash course of SolidWorks flow simulation and a lot of blogs that are out there, ways to access the forums and the knowledge base and self-paced trainings. Uh, thank you again for attending. Really appreciate your time. Uh, trusting us with your time, and I hope I can help. If you have any other questions after this, please feel free to reach out to Go Engineer in some form or fashion. We are always happy to help. That's what we do. Thank you. Have a good day.